Yeah, Andres, you should talk though. Yeah, perfect. Chrissy <laughs> Davis, um, nice to meet you. I'm with Copert. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start sharing my screen. And uh, welcome, everyone. Looking forward to uh, sharing what we're doing out here. Everything look OK? Perfect. Go ahead, Andreas. You're good to go. And just let me know next when you're ready to move on. Could you put it in a full screen by any chance? Um, it's a PDF. I'm not sure if I know how to do that. I'll try. Under view, full screen. View. Right below it. Including it. Where? Page full display? Screen. Yeah, just a little more down. Full screen. Yay. OK, thanks, everyone, for your patience. <laughs> Hey, thanks everyone. Thanks, Chrissy. My name is Andreas Newman, uh, CEO of a company called UAVIQ, which stands for Unmanned Area Vehicle Intelligence. And uh, we're not really a drone company. We're an agricultural service company that just has a lot of expertise in drones and decided that uh, after a couple of years of research, it actually is a really practical and functional tool, not just a, a, you know, a good photography toy for your kids. Uh, next slide, Chrissy. So we've had a pretty long history. Our background actually starts with the Air Force where we operated uh, pretty high profile drone operations globally. Uh, went through UCLA. Uh, we've been through a couple uh, focused startups uh, where we were in uh, you know, Chile for a year developing this. Puerto Rico, we've been in uh, top agricultural uh, startups in Colorado. So, we had a pretty long history. Uh, we really took off when uh, Bob Starnes decided to join us and uh, left UC Davis to take us to the next level. And we've been doing aerial biocontrol for the last couple of years. Next slide, Chris. Next slide. Chris. Sorry. Sorry, guys. It's uh, that it? OK. Got yeah. it. But all that history is probably something you really don't care about. It's not why you came here. So, Chrissy, next slide, please. Oh, there Wrong way. I apologize. There we go. Okay. Well, so we're here to discuss augmented biocontrol, which I think a lot of people in the crowd know. It's uh, introduction of natural enemies, either a predator or a parasitoid, into outdoor crops, and how that can be done. Uh, incredibly efficiently, not only with drones, but with the uh, right entomology support. It's really a team effort and comprehensive. Next slide, Chris. Oh boy. I'm doing it with the mouse. Sorry, it's going fast. Okay. All right. So, so there's a bit of a history how we went from flying 50,000 feet, 32,000 pounds down to something incredibly small and uh, doing it from around 15 to 20 feet. Uh, we're hopefully go through that story without boring you too much on it. Next slide, Chrissy. Hmm. <laughs> Don't know why the keypad isn't working. Okay. So these are the three people we'll be talking to you today. Myself, uh, Bob Starnes, who's our VP of Agriculture, and Chrissy Davis, who you've met. And next slide, please. All right, so why did we get into biocontrol? First of all, we're pretty good listeners. We, we heard a lot from growers and partners who told us about the pest challenges. We were focusing on remote sensing for a number of years and we kept getting feedback. Why can't you do something about the problems you're detecting? It was really not very satisfying to be able to just to detect where there's an issue. If you can't treat it, it kind of was uh, an inefficient solution to put it mildly. So we saw a problem we could solve. We needed uh, different equipment, different hardware, different drones, but realistically, we knew that we had something that we could do from a full end-to-end -end service, uh, mostly because we had an existing relationship with the world's leader in this industry, which happens to be Cobra Biological. Next slide, Chrissy. Mm -hmm. Next. <laughs> All right. So. If you're not familiar with Copert, over 50 years of experience in biocontrol. They're in more than 100 countries, about half the world, basically. And their emphasis really is working closely with growers and academic institutions, which is really essential when we're you know, bringing something new with the drones to have that whole team support behind us. Uh, a lot of experience and know-how. So it's not just uh, the drones. It's really you know 
50 years of knowledge that are going into a drone operation. Next slide, please. So why did we join forces? Well, it's pretty uh, significant operation to do this at scale with drones. Uh, it really is a lightweight aviation program, everything from flight safety to pilot training, to certification to you know, field operations and to have a maintenance and uh, supply chain, everything that you would have in aviation, you actually have in drone aviation, just at a much, much smaller scale. So we're here to build this into the capacity where we can grow this wherever there's biological treatments being used. But realistically, that's also getting us into new crop types and being able to fly in areas where lesser experienced drone operators probably could not. And we're putting a methodology behind that so we can grow and supply you know, beyond the local area here in California. Next slide. All right, I guess we're on to me. Welcome yep. everyone, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Andreas is down uh, south of Santa Maria flying today as well as Bob is up here in the north in Watsonville. So pretty exciting, action packed. Um, so I'll just jump right in. Uh, I've been at Copert for um, supporting their technical support and customers for about 18 years graduated Cal Poly um, San Luis Obispo a few years back. Um, and I work a lot with um, enhancing Copra products, field R&D, PCA work, and then also looking at um, expanding our portfolio to um, outdoor crops. So we're really excited to meet you all and look forward to helping um, educate you guys what we've been doing up to this point. Um, so natural enemies, there's a variety of them, which I will get into in a moment. Um, this is a picture of Bob out in his vineyard. Uh, so some of the key things are trying to work with uh, pesticide resistance, um, less effect from uh, later season applications. I'm just going to move my browser here so I can see the slides, thanks. Um, and then uh, just trying to limit REIs, people working in the fields. Um, and then uh, the, the main thing we've also been um, working with is um, helping to incorporate compatible chemistries into our beneficial program some. So trying to make you get more effect out of your active ingredients by not overdoing uh, some of the sprays. Um, and we also, I will share in our presentation in a moment, we do have some information to help you if you're new to using biocontrol in um, how to incorporate these chemicals after you've applied beneficials or prior. Uh, so some of the keys, my keys to success for biocontrol are uh, quality of natural enemies. They are perishable animals, creatures. And so uh, we strive at Copert, we actually ship beneficials to over a hundred countries around the world, which is really amazing. Um, so we do a lot of testing of um, the best transportation methods, how much ice to use. There's a lot that goes into uh, getting these good guys where they need to go. Um, research and development is one of the things I'm really proud of Copert is we put a lot of effort and energy back into the company, um, which is how you can see we're sharing this new technology with you um, with mechanizing um, applications for large commercial growers. Um, another key is just the cooperation of the growers. We're in this with you together. Um, so we wanna share uh, our advice, but we definitely wanna hear from you. And then we kind of come up with a, um, a comprehensive plan um, year by year approach. Uh, and then working with experienced consultants, whether that's um, your local San Diego County Farm Bureau or our um, cooperative extension advisors out in the fields to uh, your local PCAs and your college classmates. Um, another part of it, it's extremely important, um, logistics, especially as we're all learning to adapt here um, in the new world with um, logistics, transportation, customer service, and helping as we have to modify things if uh, there's a canceled flight or there's some kind of a different supply chain. We, uh, we strive to really um, make sure we, we, we support our customers and our growers. Um, and then also providing proper technical support and understanding that every farm, every crop, every variety is different. Uh, okay, so, you know, being in California, growing up here, um, you know, we can put the slide of common pests in California, but I can't tell you the amount of rare and unique pests that come to me every day. It's quite, uh, quite interesting. So just with uh, our one hour time, we're gonna just try to focus on these key pests here, mites, uh, thrips, aphids, leafhoppers, vine mealybug, and whitefly. 
How am I doing? Am I going too fast, too slow? Okay, it's. I'll take the silence as it's good. Yes, sounds great okay, to me. Christy. Okay, thank you. Uh, all righty, so natural enemies. Um, I'm one of those rare people who studied biocontrol actually in college at Cal Poly. So uh, biocontrol was my actual focus. So I started in my senior project with predatory mites and specifically persimilis, which is what our um, two drone pilots are applying today. So there's a variety of types of natural enemies. We have predatory mites, um, we have lacewing um, insect larvae, we have parasitic wasps, um, we have actual carnivores. Uh, Cryptolemus is a specialist mealybug uh, destroyer, beetle. Um, and then we have true bugs that are actually um, carnivores as well, like aureus. Um, so I'll kind of get into a few of the categories here. Um, so first, just to help you navigate if you're new to um, how some of the beneficials are packaged and whatnot, um, you guys can go to our website. I'll put it in the chat at the end. Um, and we will have a brand name, just kind of saw how some of the modes of actions are, and then the scientific name. And um, I don't know if anyone wants to uh, try to pronounce that. I'd be I'd be happy to um, to field that if anyone wants to jump in. But uh, some of the pronunciations of these are pretty complex, so we we give it a brand name to help everybody out. Um, this is a specialist predator, so she's actually just targeting mealybugs and scale. And uh, what you do is you actually apply the bottle, you flip open the lid and you tape it to the vine or the tree. And then the little wasps will hatch out inside and she is a true parasite. So she's gonna hatch out, fly out of the bottle and she will host um, search for her prey. And then she's actually gonna sting the mealybug and um, she'll turn around, take a little taste, make sure it's a nice suitable host. And then she'll turn around and she will sting it again and lay a, um, a baby inside. Uh, so it's a true form of a um, endoparasite. So big fancy word for basically uh, putting, a, putting insects inside um, the host body. Um, and, you know, she pre prefers to use second and third larval stages. And, you know, don't get too wrapped up in, um, you know, writing notes and whatnot down, um, but we're here to help you guys kind of understand the differences and have the best success with these beneficials. Okay, so this one, uh, she's one of my favorites. She has a common name of the mealy bug destroyer. And I know uh, from some of my trips of visiting some of the bedding plant nurseries and whatnot in uh, San Diego, mealy bug is always a hot topic. And um, so what's neat is we actually have been able to produce this in an adult form and newer in the last maybe five years or so, we actually have a bottle of a larva. Um, and this is one of the ones we've really been targeting with the drone and I'll let my colleagues share that with you. Uh, so what's interesting about the mealybug destroyer, I don't know if you see my cursor, but the large insect, the white uh, cottony insect in the bottom left is actually the beneficial. And then just a little bit below her is the mealybug. So she's really cryptic in her nature in um, trying to mask herself. So it's pretty fun, a really fun insect to work with. Okay, predatory mites, my favorite. Um, so this is Phytostelis persimilis, eating a two-spotted spider mate. And uh, I can't help but share how awesome it is that she actually attacks her prey. So she doesn't have eyes. She will actually detect when the spider mite is feeding on the leaf. Um, she'll crawl around, detect that mite. She will stick her piercing like uh, mouth parts inside the mite. She'll suck a little bit of the juices inside um, and they'll have this kind of back and forth fluid transfer and eventually she's actually gonna consume her prey. She's kind of tenderizing her meat is um, how we say. Uh, and it's quite incredible, one of these little spiders can actually eat 500 uh, spider mites in her lifetime. So they're very effective predators. Um, and they work very well in an IPM system. There's quite a few chemistries that we have that are very compatible. Um, so this is one of the major uh, predatory mites, um, arachnids that we're applying out in the fields. Um, so I'll let the guys share, but we do formulate her, we mix, um, the predator with vermiculite comes in a bottle or a bucket and then we actually can uh, gracefully fly these over the field so they can hunt and search. So 
Uh, Californicus, this is actually our native, um, and she tends to do better in hot, dry conditions um, where there's low humidity. So this is just another specialist predatory mite that focuses on spider mite. But she also does have the ability to help feed on things like broad mite, cyclamen mite, and even thrips. Uh, so, so there's kind of different classes of, of predatory mites. Okay, um, next on our, um, on our miracle of beneficials is we have Amblyseus swirskii, and she is quite an incredible creature. She can handle low humidities, hot temperatures, and she's a true kind of uh, ladybug of the beneficial world. Um, she can eat white fly, cyclamen mite, thrips, uh, spider mite, a, a wide variety of, of pests. And so when you have um, a crop like a melon um, that really has a lot of different pests that attack it, this is a really nice beneficial to put into your crops. Um, worldwide, we use a lot of Swirsky mite. Swirsky eye, we used to call her mighty mite. Um, and, you know, uh, there is additional information that you can also learn on our website. I don't want to take too much of the presentation time here, but there is a lot of information about whether or not they die of pause and how they work in winter temperatures um, and also how many eggs they will eat and uh, the prey they like, uh, they prefer to feed on. Okay, lace wings. Uh, these, these are really incredible creatures. They're actually nocturnal. Um, they do a lot of their feeding at night. And uh, in the upper left, you'll see an adult. She's got these nice lacy wings. Um, and then in the bottom left, um, for our colleagues out there in Florida, she actually looks like a little bit of an alligator. Um, and it's quite incredible to watch her eat a aphid. I mean, it is ripping the aphid body apart and just going, going to town on it. It's pretty exciting. So we um, are using this one in a, a variety of crops from orchards to vineyards to greenhouses um, because it is a true generalist predatory mite, or not predatory mite, excuse me, a uh, predaceous insect. And so even crops like uh, caneberries where we're running into things like fruit fries or drosophila, this lends itself to a new, um, a new tool for the toolbox, we could say. All right. Um, lastly, I just wanted to briefly share some of the work that we have been doing to help farmers. We've been actually working with some different technology of a scouting software. Uh, so what you do is you can actually walk throughout the field and input the different pests, whether it's diseases, um, insects, predators, and then you can actually track it over time. And it can also help you track how well um, your insecticides or fungicides are. So here the black line is a powdery mildew. So we can see at this point, we applied a fungicide and we see a reduction in the disease. And uh, these are some of the things that help us from technical perspectives of trying to um, uh, enhance some of our IPM programs as we're moving into existing and new crops. Lastly, this is free to use and it's very helpful. Um, as I said, I'll put it on the chat. It's our side effects guide. Um, and so what you do is you can go from your phone, there's an app or from your computer and you can look for the beneficial here on the top. Then you can look for either the trade name or the active ingredient. And it will give you this nice chart of whether or not it is compatible or harmful for the beneficials. Uh, we also have um, a listing of the type, the mode of application, whether you're applying it as a drench, sometimes drenches are a lot more compatible versus a spray or a fog. Um, and then we also have some information because we do a lot of work with hydroponic um, uh, tomatoes grown in the greenhouses. So we work with bumblebees. Okay, uh, this is just kind of a sample of, um, of one of our, our, our tables. So you can see Dipel, the BT is very compatible, a lot of greens. It will also give you a persistence in weeks. So you can see over here the permethrin um, with a full contact, you could get up to eight to 12 weeks residual. So this is very helpful as you're learning to transition your crops into using um, an IPM program. And lastly, why is Cobert excited about drones? Um, is uh, efficiencies in the fields, labor, and uh, how we can actually cover large areas of agriculture. There's so much outdoor crops here in the US, especially in Florida and California. So we're really looking to 
um, help help our farmers have more tools to help them apply to the fields. And with this, I think I covered it. I hope I didn't go too far into it. Um, Tomas, is there any uh, pressing questions or Katie? No, I think we, if Bob is ready, we can pass it to Bob. Um, oh my gosh, okay, this is working great. All right, Bob, Bob you it's prefer all you. <laughs> hey, Chrissy, why don't you uh, continue to control it and uh, yep. I'll just talk on the slides. Yep, you got it. And just let me know when to move it. I'm doing it with the mouse. You're all good, Bob. Sounds loud and clear. Perfect. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Bob Starnes. I'm the Vice President of Agriculture here at UAVIQ, and I spend a lot of time doing uh, research and development. And uh, as like today, I'm out uh, doing one of our actual commercial missions at a strawberry field in Watsonville and in Moss Landing. Uh, and before I joined uh, UAVIQ, I worked at uh, UC Davis from 2001 to 2016 in the Department of Entomology. And I was a senior superintendent of agriculture there, uh, working uh, in a research laboratory that investigated uh, IPM strategies and remote sensing technology in agriculture. Uh, next, Chrissy. And so, yeah, here's the some of the work I did at UC Davis uh, in entomology. We were doing some remote sensing here on the left, uh, taking some reflectance imaging from uh, plants. And then we also had a drone-based system that would go out uh, in the field to collect uh, hyperspectral data. And we also, not pictured here, started to develop hoppers for dr uh, dropping insects there at UC Davis uh, back in like 2015 and 2016. And then I uh, left in 2016 to start uh, working with commercial uh, ag and when a couple different hopper systems and ended up working as a consultant with UC Davis or uh, with Copert to build the current uh, hopper system that we are using today. Uh, next. So there are limitations of manual releases and just to name a few here, they can be time consuming and labor intensive. We can replace a crew of 12 to 20 people and we can operate um, about five to 10 acres depending on uh, crop type in under 15 minutes and we can release anywhere from a few thousand per acre to 50,000 per acre uh, while doing that. Uh, when you have uh, manual releases there's a, a low um, precision and uniformity in the release of beneficials. The beneficials can move around in the bottle while people are out there releasing it and it takes them all day. So you could end up with just some vermiculite in some areas and then some vermiculite and beneficials in other areas. We can put about 10 acres uh, in, in the hopper at once and get that out in under 15 minutes and keep everything nice and cold and in the dark at the entire time. So it's all nice and uniform as it goes out. Uh, manual releases cannot be applied in some of the field conditions or in tall crops where people can't reach. So we were able to fly over trees and release uh, very, very, uh, very accurately over the top of the trees. And we show up uh, like right now on these strawberry fields where it's been raining and people can't walk in the fields and we can park quite a far away away and uh, do like 150 to 200 acres from one spot uh, out in a nice dry area. And uh, Putting labor out to do some of these uh, manual releases takes away from other uh, other critical tasks that the uh, owner operator could have their employees doing um, instead of doing this. Next, Chrissy. So, why do we release beneficials from a drone? We've kind of touched on that already. Um, you know, we're faster application, as I spoke about, uh, by a single operator, uh, more precise rates, uh, and we could also do differential hotspot treatments. If uh, we know in the field where they are, we can just show up in that area and release a certain amount, uh, measured amount in that area. We can access uh, challenging terrain, like I said, uh, flooded grounds, uh, steep hills, treetops, and we can disperse uh, biocontrol agents exactly where they're needed. Next, Chrissy. We uh, control the process uh, from start to finish and keep the quality as high as we can. Basically, uh, we work really tight with Copert. Copert comes out, um, like Chrissy here, would come out and uh, 
and, and her team would come out and figure out what uh, pests and what population size they are in your field and then suggest a treatment plan. And then the product is ordered and sent to us. It's all refrigerated in uh, trucks. Uh, it comes right to our drone operators within 24 hours and then is put out that day. So there's no uh, sitting around in, in hot spots and, and things running away and are, are, are getting killed in uh, bad uh, temperatures. We can uh, operate or our drone operators can release beneficials without disturbing uh, the current operations of the farm. Yeah, we do ask that uh, people move around so we don't fly over directly over people. But other than that, we can fly completely uh, out of the way um, from the rest of the action that's going on. And uh, we have specialists uh, here at our plate at UAVIQ and then at Copert to help you with your IPM program questions and make sure you have good success. Next, Chrissy. So lessons learned uh, from the first years of our commercial work um, is that we were able to address some of the labor issues. Um, and this one's really becoming more important now as the minimum wage is going up. We've been getting a lot more business this year as the California minimum ag wage goes up. Um, uniform distribution, uh, we've spent a lot of time, Cobra spent a lot of time doing uh, really accurate uh, assays out in the field to see the difference between a drone distributed uh, field and a hand distributed field. And we are by far, um, I don't have the data here, but uh, we're 30, 40% better at uh, getting a uniform distribution across the field. And uh, we, we realized that uh, in those early years that we, we could get out into the fields a lot earlier than people because of the things like flooding in the crops, hard to reach areas. Uh, we had supply chain uh, things to work out, but we, for the most part, fixed those. Now we're actually getting products that are easier to get from the bottle and into the drone and faster to deploy it out into the field. Um, our initial assessments um, for efficacy field visits um, have been uh, very good and we get a lot of good feedback from the growers when when they go out and scout even just after our first release uh, they're finding you know with at least like the persimilis that we're releasing right now that uh, within just a couple of days they go back and they are finding uh, persimilis in all the different areas and laying eggs and, and eating on the two spotted spider mites so they're very happy next Chrissy These are some of the beneficials that we've successfully dropped commercially with uh, this current system with Copa right now. Uh, we've released predator mites, but we released uh, Phytoceulus persimilis, Amblyceus swirsky, uh, Neoceulus californicus, uh, a couple others. Uh, we've released uh, Chrysop uh, Chrysopa, the green lacewing. We've released uh, Cryptolamus larva, and uh, I think some adults along the way. Um, we've also released uh, aureus over a few different crops. Next, Chrissy. So some of the challenges uh, that we've encountered as we as we get as we move forward um, in technology, the, some of the systems we're using right now um, that need to be able to lift uh, a fair amount. We're, we're working right up against the 50 pound limit because it's where uh, the FAA changes some of the rules when you go over 55 pounds. So we're working with some pretty good sized, uh, good sized drones and some of the newer tech that's on new drones hasn't made it to some of these big ones. So we're running uh, like no radar and, and uh, very little obstacle avoidance. So the things that we're working on right now to improve are those two things. Um, ground truthing via like satellites is not very accurate. So we're working on a new way of uh, getting a digital surface map of the field before we fly it, uh, which is a lot more accurate than just trying to use a Google map. Uh, integration, uh, part of IPM, you know, we're always working and Chrissy especially is working with these growers to integrate their system with uh, or their spray program with our uh, insects and mites so that they can uh, have the best chance of survival. Uh, we, local protocols, you know, what comes to mind is more of like a state protocol, but the CDPR 
uh, kind of jumped in last year and wanted us to be uh, regulated like uh, crop dusters. So now we have APC and JPC licenses here in the in the house and the company and uh, moving forward on those. Uh, economic uh, decision making and threshold levels uh, are unknown for a lot of crops. So really takes Chrissy uh, and her team to work out some uh, really solid ideas on what to, what insects and mites will work and at what rates and then and we come along and put them out. And some other challenges environmentally, uh, we can't fly in the rain yet. We're uh, hoping to upgrade to some new systems that are uh, waterproof. Uh, and we also have some limits uh, with wind. So we, we try and limit our flights uh, to like 15 miles an hour of wind uh, for precision drops. Uh, next slide, Chrissy. Uh, so yeah, the, the IPM pain points kind of touched on a minute ago, pesticide and fungicide treatments damage uh, the beneficials and we can you know, work with the growers to figure out what you currently use or what you're going to use in the future and how that integrates um, with the insects and mites that we're dropping. And you can always use that app that uh, Chrissy showed a minute ago and or call one of us. Uh, integration and goal setting is critical for the IPM success. So if you uh, don't don't set some goals and figure out the uh, the integration for the chemicals, a lot of these uh, pests will have a harder time surviving in your in your field. Uh, vineyard example for some uh, IPM actions that have uh, impacts uh, are, are in, 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 for example, in the grape uh, industry, we've seen overly vigorous vines attract uh, leaf hopper and create uh, more issues with powdery mildew and overly stressed and or dusty vines can attract pests, uh, just like it is the can in the uh, and the spider mites are in the uh, in the uh, strawberries, and uh, the last pain point is a high dollar per acre um, for these exper experiments uh, can get a little uh, a little pricey, and we're working really uh, closely with Copert to get the rate right and integrate that with sprays. That way, we can have a nice uh, integrated pest management plan for you. Uh, next uh, slide, Chrissy. So this season uh, offers a lot of lot of opportunities. We're uh, looking to, for growers that have uh, known protocols, and then we can just bring the drone right in, and it's a, a lot a real easy uh, switch. Like in the strawberries, they were already using a lot of uh, uh, persimilis. So bringing the drone in and just uh, optimizing the, uh, the drop was really easy, and we look forward to finding growers with other known protocols that we can just bring the drone right in and start working. Uh, we want to work with, uh, I think I'm on the wrong slide here. Let's start here, the battling mites. Uh, predator mite uh, candidates uh, are, you know, anything with two spotted spider mite, we have a pretty good uh, IPM program now for that, uh, either with a Phytoceles persimilis or the Californicus. Uh, we're looking for, for people that uh, are interested in reducing their labor required for IPM as the minimum wage goes up. Uh, we have a 40 acre minimum to uh, come out to fly the drone. And of course, anything bigger, we're, we're completely uh, there for that. And also looking for growers interested in joint efforts to develop new protocols uh, with different insects and different trees or different, uh, different crops like trees. Okay, Chrissy. So yeah, we're uh, looking for field partners to do co-development with, uh, we, we need some understanding of sampling procedures out in the field. Um, if someone knows their economic injury level, that's great. I know those are not uh, well known for a lot of crops, but if uh, that is well known, it's a real easy uh, process to put a biocontrol program into that with the drone. Uh, we're looking what uh, an ideal partner would have uh, cultural and biological controls as uh, preventatives, get an early start on some of these pest 
problems before they get out of hand and need a pesticide application. And, you know, looking to use chemicals, even organic ones, um, less and less to avoid impacting the beneficial insect and mite populations that we put out there. I think that's the end of that one. Back to Mr. Andreas. <laughs> Christy and Bob, uh, next slide, please, Christy. Never like me in a suit. All right, so existing services and accomplishments, we've established both the Central Coast and Northern California as, as markets that we can operate and cover reliably. Uh, really happy to report. We have a really high repeat uh, visit rate, happy customers asking us to come back. So uh, we're really happy with uh, Central Coast and uh, Northern California. Really looking forward to start expanding into Southern California as well this season. So hopefully uh, somebody in this crowd will, will help bring us down there. Uh, we've also been able to split our time between commercial work and field trials, probably around 80, 20 or so between uh, our ability to cover field trials at 20% you know, of, our, of our work right now and develop new crop types, new protocols, we do that along with covert and in certain cases also with a uh, UC extension professional. So really happy that a lot of people are seeing this as a way forward to get into new crop types and bring biologics beyond the current market. Next slide, please, Chrissy. So what's coming next, uh, more beneficials, uh, largely as a result of the field trials, uh, larger payload capability, as, as Bob said, we'll be able to increase our uh, capacity from around 300 acres currently uh, we have plans to get it up over 500 with uh, a little bit of extra technology help. Uh, smarter drones to let us do this at night. Uh, night operations are something that we are definitely looking into and have done some, some trials and that's useful for both wind conditions during the day, they're often calmer at night and also for some areas the, the heat limitations make nighttime flying a lot more uh, beneficial for for both the operators, humans out there, but more importantly for the biologics when they're, when they're being released. So looking forward to getting our first commercial one beyond the field trials for night flights. Uh, next, slide, uh, next slide, please, Chris. So we're ready to start opening up for questions. And uh, Tomas, if you want to take over the, uh, the screen sharing again, if you want to prep uh, the short video, I think we are ready for the crowd and that video. I show a quick video and yeah, get your answer ready and we can answer them after the video. Can you see my screen? Yep. The audio isn't playing. Yeah, sorry, not sure how to do that, but uh, yeah, we'd have to go <laughs> without the, the, the music. <laughs>
All right. Yeah, sorry for the music at the beginning. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, Andres, you want to conclude? And uh, if there's any questions after this, you know, feel free to email any of us on the presentation, and we're happy to get back to you or just give us a call. And appreciate everybody sticking through the slides and a little bit of the technical difficulties. But hopefully, you're as excited about this as we are once you uh, let us out to your field and give us a shot. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you guys so much for, for sharing. And I do all, I have everybody's email. So um, if you didn't write down email addresses, you can email me and I'll forward them to you as well. Yeah, I put the chat, um, covertus.com. And then in there, you can search for that side effects guide. It's really useful whether you have native beneficials or um, you're applying beneficials out there. So yeah, any questions from the field out there? <laughs> New stuff. It's really fun to see what we're uh, accomplishing these days. Yeah, very interesting. Thanks, Katie. Oh, we appreciate you inviting course. us. Of course. Thank you, guys. Thanks for, for your time. All right. Have a good rest of your day. Mm -hmm. You do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for joining.